Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about concepts related to effects of norepinephrine, epinephrine and endothelin on renal blood flow and GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. As we have started discussing the determinants of renal blood flow and we talked about the different determinants which can increase or decrease the blood flow to kidney. We specially discussed the sympathetic nervous system effect on blood flow to kidney and hence the GFR. Now, the effect of norepinephrine and epinephrine are pretty much similar to the effect of sympathetic nervous system. Is the sympathetic nervous system activation increases the constriction of the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole which decreases the blood supply to the glomerular capillaries and decreases the GFR. Similarly, the, the, when the sympathetic activation occurs, the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine increases from the renal medulla. Now, Suppose, for example, this is kidney. On top of the kidney, here we have the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland outside portion is known as renal cortex and the uh, adrenal cortex and the inner portion is the adrenal medulla. So from the adrenal medulla, the norepinephrine and epinephrine are secreted into the blood. But no, most of the time, they get secreted when the sympathetic nervous system activation has occurred and it is already causing constriction of the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole. So the rise in the level of blood norepinephrine and epinephrine go hand in hand with the sympathetic activation and both both these hormones the norepinephrine and epinephrine increases the constriction of the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole hence decreasing the blood flow to the glomerular capillaries hence acting as an important determinant of the renal blood flow and once the blood flow to the glomerular capillaries has been decreased the gfr decreases now we should uh, uh, quickly revise the blood flow to the kidney. We discussed so many times that the blood starts entering the kidney through the renal artery, then goes through the uh, lobar artery, then the arcuate artery, then the lobular artery, finally the afferent arteriole, the glomerular capillaries, then the efferent arteriole, then the peritibular capillaries, then the lobar vein, the, uh, the, sorry, the lobar vein, the arcuate vein, and the, uh, the lobular vein, the arcuate vein, and then the lobar vein, and finally the renal vein. And the pressure of blood initially is 100 mm of mercury and finally at the renal vein the pressure of blood is 4 mm of mercury. So along, along the blood vessel there is persistent decrease in the arterial pressure and the, the, the biggest decrease in the arterial pressure occurs between the lobular artery and the peritibular capillaries where at the start of lobular artery the blood pressure the, the arterial pressure is around 100 mm of mercury and at the end of the peritibular capillaries it is 8 mm of mercury so this region is the point of maximum resistance to the blood flow and any increase or decrease in the resistance in these levels act as an important determinant of renal blood flow and we also discussed in detail that at the glomerular capillaries we discussed in detail these diagrams we discussed in detail in our previous lecture if you have not watched those uh, lectures we discussed that blood comes through the afferent arteriole into the glomerular capillaries and then leaves through the efferent arteriole the, in the glomerular capillaries the filtration process occur and the filtrate enters the bowman's capsule and then the process of urine formation starts now this thing was uh, discussed in detail in this diagram in which the glomerular capillaries were enlarged and the afferent and efferent arteriole were shown now this is the region uh, now this is the region which has been enlarged here. This is the afferent arteriole. It is the efferent arteriole. Here is the whole of kidney. Now, when the blood is entering the glomerular capillaries, some pressures are acting. Some pressures are forcing or helping the filtration process. Some uh, pressures are basically opposing the filtration process. Now, if the, the, the resistance or due to the constriction of the afferent arteriole or the efferent arteriole is increased either due to the sympathetic nervous system, norepinephrine or epinephrine, the blood flow to the glomerular capillaries will decrease and the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate will decrease. Now, this that's why that's why the sympathetic nervous system, the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine act as an important determinant of the renal blood flow and the an important determinant of the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. Apart from the norepinephrine and epinephrine, another um, autocoid uh, known as the endothelin is sometimes also acting uh, or playing its role in decreasing the blood flow and decreasing the GFR. Now, endothelin is released from the endothelium of the blood vessels. Now, this is suppose, for example, this is the blood vessel. The, the, here is a layer of cells known as the endothelial cells. Now, the endothelin is basically secreted from these endothelial cells and they act as a vasoconstrictor. They also constrict the afferent and efferent arteriole, but all these actions, all these actions occurs when there is se severe activation of the sympathetic nervous system and activation of the 
sympathetic active uh, nervous system and release of norepinephrine and epinephrine occurs only when there is a con severe condition like for example severe blood loss or severe hypotension or loss of fluid from the body now the the purpose of the release of these uh, hormones and autocoids is to constrict to constrict the blood vessels and to decrease the blood loss but uh, to decrease the blood loss and to decrease the fluid loss from the body in the form of urine they may sometimes uh, basically uh, lead to a renal shutdown the glomerular filtration rate the gfr may decrease so much that a renal uh, sorry the kidneys may enter the uh, renal shutdown and acute renal failure can also occur now this endothelin is not only secreted when the blood vessel is damaged but it is also sometimes secreted in chronic diseases like toxemia of pregnancy or acute renal failure or chronic uremia now these are the conditions which we are not going into detail in this lecture but will be discussed when uh, in the, their proper section so that's the effect of norepinephrine and epinephrine on renal blood flow and hence the gfr and most of the time they will decrease the gfr thanks a lot for watching the video